This is lesson for 9-4, all right? What we're doing today, this is 9-4, day two. What we're doing today are the second half of the word problems. For these word problems today, you're really gonna wanna draw the picture. That will help you to identify your A side, your B side, and your C side. The directions are the same as they've been the past couple days, round to the nearest 10th if necessary. Some questions will be nice, neat numbers. Other ones will be big, long, ugly decimals. So in this first one, um, remember, identify your A side, your B side, and your C side. Please remember that your C side is always the slanted side. It doesn't matter which side you pick for A or which side you pick for B, but the A and the B form the right angles. Your C side is always the slanted side. So there's really like two different types of questions that they like to give. Um, when we take a look at those, those are the ones from yesterday. When we take a look at these, these are word problems, but they're very, very short, easy to set up word problems. So the first one says a 26 foot ladder is leaning up against the wall. The distance from the base of the wall to the base of the ladder is 24 foot. What is the height of the wall? Right now, just from reading the question, you probably don't know what your A side, your B side, and your C side are. This is where it helps to draw the picture. So we have a ladder leaning up against the wall. Here is my wall. And here is my ladder leaning up against the wall. So it says that a 26 foot ladder is leaning up against the wall. That means the ladder is 26 feet long. So that's where my 26 goes. Now the distance from the base of the wall to the base of the ladder is 24 feet. The word base, the word base means bottom, all right? The word base means bottom. So I chose green because this, imagine this is sort of like grass, all right? The distance from the base of the wall, the bottom of the wall right here, to the bottom of the ladder right here, that distance is 24 feet. So whenever they talk about the base, the base means the bottom. What is the height of the wall? So we don't know what the height of the wall is. That, that's what we're looking to find. So what does our triangle look like? Hopefully you can see the picture of the triangle right here in the orange. All right, there's my right triangle. Your slanted side is clearly the ladder. Whenever you have a ladder leaning up against something, that's your C side, is your ladder. Um, they like to do different questions where a ladder leans up against the side of a building or the side of a house or up against a tree, things like that. Um, so this, C, this is your C side, because that's your slanted side. Just like in the other problems that we've done, it doesn't matter what you pick for A or what you pick for B. So I'm gonna pick A as my X and B as my 24 but you have to pick the ladder as the C side. We're gonna use that same formula that we've been using, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Sub in what you know. Instead of A squared, we have X squared. Instead of B squared, we have 24 squared. And instead of C squared, we have 26 squared. Now, these are a mixture of problems. Sometimes you're gonna be solving for the A and the B side, so you need to subtract the numbers before you take the square root. Sometimes you're gonna be solving for the C side where you have to add the numbers before taking the square root. Remember that our goal is to get the X squared all by itself. To get that X squared all by itself, we need to get rid of that plus 24 squared. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is figure out what 24 squared is. 24 squared is 24 times 24, which is 576. 26 squared is 26 times 26, which is 676. Bring down your X squared, bring down your plus sign. So this is now just like solving a one-step equation. We wanna try and get this X squared all by itself. To get the x squared all by itself, we want to do minus 576 and minus 576. 
those 576s cancel out. Bring down your x squared, bring down your equal sign, 676 minus 576 is 100. The last step in every single problem is to take the square root. So we need to take the square root of 100. Now remember, when you go to take the square root of 100 on these school calculators, you have to hit the second button, which is in that upper left-hand corner. Then you hit the X squared button, which is really the square root button. Then you hit 100 and hit equals. If you go to use a computer uh, calculator on a computer, on a school device, the square root button looks like this. It looks like a two with a little X in it. That is the square root button on the computer or devices. You have to type in the number first and then hit that button. Every calculator is a little bit different. If you go to use a phone, remember that you might see SQRT there instead. That stands for the square root. But on these school calculators, you hit second, X squared, which is really the square root button. You'll see the little check mark up here on the screen. Hit 100 and then equals. What that is, is 10. So what does that mean in the context of our problem? We are looking for the height of the wall. So the height of the wall, it is a 10 foot tall wall. Taking a look at the next type of question. It says a rectangle measures 52 centimeters by 165 centimeters. What is the measure of the diagonal? Now, some people might not know what the word diagonal means. Think about playing tic-tac-toe. When you go to play tic-tac-toe, if you get a diagonal tic-tac-toe, you're getting a tic-tac-toe that goes from corner to corner. That's a diagonal going from corner to corner. It could also go from the other corner to the other corner. If we use the O's here, going from corner to corner, that is a diagonal. So a diagonal goes from corner to corner. So when we have our picture here, it says a rectangle measures 52 by 165. So what's the picture that I'm going to draw? I'm going to draw a rectangle. Sometimes, and you have one on your homework today that says a square, so you would draw a square. So a rectangle measures 52 by 165. Let's use some common sense. Which side is 52, the shorter side or the longer side? Longer. It has to be the shorter side because the other side is 165. So 52 has to be the shorter side because the longer side is 165. Does it matter if you use 165 as the top instead? Nope, doesn't matter. Does it matter if you use 52 over here? Nope, doesn't matter. So what is the measure of the diagonal? Now the diagonal goes from corner to corner. It's like that, blue line. What is the measure of that diagonal? I don't know. So that is my X, because that's what I'm looking for. When we go to look at the triangle, I'm sure that you can see the triangle, but let me highlight it here in the orange. There's my right triangle. So the next thing that we want to do is identify our A side, our B side, and our C side. The C side is the slanted side. So in this case, it's X. Doesn't matter which one you pick for A or which one you pick for B. You're going to sub those numbers into the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Instead of A squared, I have 52 squared. Instead of B squared, I have 165 squared. And instead of C squared, I have X squared. In the previous problem, we were solving for the A or the B, so we had to subtract the numbers. This time we're solving for the C side. Notice that we have the x squared all by itself already. So all that we need to do is type this part right into the calculator. 52 squared plus 165 squared. Remember that you can't shortcut it and add together 52 and 165 first. You have to do, one, you have to do 52 squared plus 165 squared. 
When you do that, you get 29,929 equals x squared. The last step in every single question is to take the square root. So second button, x squared button, 29,929, hit equals. We end up with an answer of 173. So again, sometimes they use a square, sometimes they use a rectangle. Your diagonal goes from corner to corner. If we did this one a little bit differently, and we said that the top was 165 and this side was 52, you would end up with, oh, you'd end up with that same diagonal. Let's say that we did the bottom as 165 instead. Then our diagonal would be going like this, right? And that would be our diagonal. So you're gonna get the same measurement though. You're gonna get the same answer. The last type of question. This is a question right off your final exam in June. Here you have a final exam question that looks just like this. It says, two cars leave a house in Richmond, Virginia. Notice that in the graph, it's pointing at Richmond, Virginia, right here. One of the cars travels eight miles north. The direction of north, north is straight up. And six miles to the east. To the east is to the right. The second car travels 12 miles south. South is down and nine miles to the west. To the west is left. How far apart are the two cars? Notice that in our picture, they already gave you the eight and the six. So this distance is eight. This distance is six. They gave you already 12 miles south, and they gave you already nine miles to the left or to the west. They want to know how far apart is the red car to the green car. Well, hopefully you should be seeing that you have a right triangle right here and you have another right triangle right here. So just looking at that orange triangle, just looking at the orange triangle, can I find this distance, right? from Richmond to the car. Yes, all right, that is your C side of the triangle. Doesn't matter what you pick for A or for B. So just looking at the orange triangle, I'm going to have eight squared plus six squared equals X squared. You have your X squared all by itself, so you're gonna type in that into the calculator, eight squared plus six squared, that is 100 equals x squared. The last step in every problem is to take the square root and we get 10. So this distance right here is 10. Looking at the yellow triangle, looking at the yellow triangle, we have 12 and nine. We're looking for this distance, which is your C side as well doesn't matter which one you pick for A and which one you pick for B. So for that bottom triangle, I'm going to have 9 squared plus 12 squared equals X squared. Again, we're looking for the C side. So we could just take this and type it right into the calculator because we already have our X squared all by itself. 9 squared plus 12 squared is 225. That equals x squared. The last step is to take the square root, take the square root, we get an answer of 15. So this distance is 15. Now, did we find our final answer? No, the original question says, how far apart are the two cars? This distance, is 10, this distance is 15. What do I have to do with those two numbers? Add them together. 10 plus 15 is 25. 25 is your final answer, all right? They are 25 miles apart. You have a question exactly like that 
on your final exam. And it'll be multiple choice.